Hello everyone, this is Sean with Backflow Supply out of Salt Lake City, Utah again. It's that time of year and despite being quarantined or self-isolation, -isola whatever you want to call it, we have responsibilities around the home uh, to maintain and one of those is your sprinkler system. So today I want to talk about specifically the Watts 800M4 pressure vacuum breaker or it may say LF 800M4 which just means it's lead free. But it's exactly the same assembly. Uh, the parts are the same, the maintenance is the same, all of that's the same. Um, I want to be clear that this is not installed at a proper height. It's just for demonstration because of the height of my table I needed it to be more convenient to work on. These should be installed 12 inches above the critical level and on the side of your assembly it'll say CL with a line. And that means that you have to have this 12, 12 inches higher than any head or outlet on your sprinkler system or however whatever you're installing it for but this is specifically about your irrigation system so if you have um, a flower bed for example that you have raised heads to be able to sprinkle up above it then this has to be 12 inches higher than that and if you've got a slope or raised uh, spots in your yard and you've got sprinkler heads in them this needs to be higher than those the other uh, common feature that I hear about is people putting hose bibs that come off of their sprinkler line to make it more convenient to use a hose somewhere else in their yard. This has to be 12 inches higher than those hose bibs. Um, so keep that in mind. Just some real brief demonstration. This is or explanation. This is the inlet side. The water comes up this way and this is the outlet that goes to your sprinkler systems. So typically you'll see another piece of pipe coming out of here with an elbow that brings the pipe back down into the ground. Um, these, you've got an inlet shutoff valve and an outlet shutoff valve. They're also called ball valves because there's a ball in there that's used to turn it on and off with. And on this particular model it has two test cocks. One on the outlet and one on the inlet side. And these also are a ball type uh, valve that turns it on and off. And it's got a screwdriver slot that goes uh, that to turn it on and off with. And the principle is the same for the ball valves and the test cocks. If the handle is going in line with the ball valve, it's on. If it's going across the ball valve, it's off. Again, like I said with the test cock, if the screw is turned in the direction of the test cock, it's on. If it's going across the test cock, it's off. So those are important things to be aware of as you're turning this on. Now, we'll talk about the correct turning it on procedure here in just a minute. But I want to take this apart and show you how easy it is to inspect if, if you initially turn it on and you get water pouring out and it doesn't stop. So this is your bonnet. This plate has two screws in it. You don't have to worry about that. Um, this is used for testing purposes, but to maintain it, and it should be this simple that you can just use your hand to unthread this. Just screws onto the body. When you take it off, it has a spring that should stay attached, um, but it is important to make sure that the spring is bottomed out against this little bracket here in the back. Uh, if it's not, then just use a screwdriver and push it down against the, the bracket that's holding that on. Then you've got an O-ring that sits here in the lip of the body. And then you have a float. It has four legs on it that guide it up into the bonnet and this O-ring. So this is what causes it to, to leak or not leak out of the backflow assembly. And the water pressure pushes against this float and seals that O-ring right here against the bonnet. So if it's leaking out it's one of these issues and it could possibly be this bonnet o-ring has gone bad since that is a seal there as well. But most common these legs get broken off due to winter freeze or if water's trapped underneath here because it didn't get drained properly it can push up through the center of these legs and break through so that'll also cause it to leak. Um, you could get cracks in the bonnet as well. Sometimes those are more difficult to see and uh, something just to pay attention to. Then inside you've got this, it's called a check retainer and it has four little legs as well that the float, uh, this hollow part, sits down in and it just guides it. And to get this check retainer out all you do is use your two fingers and push down against the sides of the wall of the assembly 
and push down and quarter turn it and lift it up and out. So not much to it. And the sides of the assembly are two little notches uh, on either side here. And that's what locks that into place. Then you've got a cone shaped spring for the check. And then you've got a check valve that's down there that also has four little legs and a rubber gasket. And this rubber gasket is replaceable. It just pulls out and around like that. Uh, and then to put it back, oh, and then there's also a seat, a plastic replaceable seat that's down here. And you want to make sure that that's not uh, dinged up from a rock or something coming through and chipping away at it. That needs to be smooth too. But this check will not make it leak out of the bonnet. But it is important that it works when it's being tested. Um, this device should be tested annually according to your jurisdiction and the two components have to work properly. Um, and that seat down inside is also replaceable. So to put this back in, you just take those four legs and put it down in the center of the seat. Then you take your check spring. The wide end goes down and it sits just perfectly over the top of that, that check. You take your retainer and put it on top of that spring and make sure that that hole in the retainer goes down over the top of that check stem and then you rotate it until the two sides lock into place. Your vent float, the hollow end, goes down over those uh, legs of the check retainer. You take your bonnet o-ring and place it back in the groove and you take your bonnet again making sure that your spring is there and make sure you get that lined up and then just slowly tighten it and just snug it. It's an o-ring sill. You don't need to over tighten it. Then I'm going to show you some procedures that came with your uh, with your 800M4 when you got it. And you may not have seen it. Whoever installed it may have just thrown it away. But this is how you should turn it on. You close your number two outlet shutoff valve. You slowly open the number one inlet shut off until water comes out bonnet, then quickly open to pressurize the valve. And three, you open the number two shutoff valve. So let's get this in the right positions. So your outlet would be off. I'm sorry, your inlet would be off and your outlet would be off. And it tells us you to make sure that this one's closed. Slowly open the inlet shutoff valve until water starts coming out from underneath here. And once it does, then quickly open that and push that float up against the top of the bonnet to seal it. That should stop any water from coming out from around there. If not, you need to take it apart, look at it, and see if you need some repair kits. And then once that's sealed, then you, I would say, slowly open this outlet shutoff valve as you feed your sprinkler lines. You don't want to turn it on too quick in case you might break a, a weak joint or something that happened during the winter. And that's all that is there is to it. Um, if I, I hope you find this helpful. And if you have any questions, please comment. Or you can contact me by calling me or emailing me. Uh, those contact information will be on the, the slides at the end of the video. Thank you very much. I hope you have a good day and uh, hope you have a good uh, backflow season. Thank you.